there's a hit and run, Captain Hook decides to get his revenge on teenagers and Buffy the Vampire Slayer is in this one. This is Janda with Popcorn Recap and today I will be covering I Know What You Did Last Summer. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. It was summer on the 4th of July where the 47th annual Croker Festival is taking place in a small town in North Carolina. David Egan is sitting on the cliffside of an isolated road, fiddling with what appears to be a necklace. Six of the participants, all of whom are stunningly beautiful, meow, compete in a competition in the festival hall. People yell loudly when the participants emerge, especially Helen Shivers who is also crowned Croker Queen in the contest that night. The group at the top of the hole is ecstatic. After a minor dispute between Max and Barry, the four buddies head down to Dawson Beach. They arrive at the beach where Ray tells them a terrifying story, to which Barry opposes because he has heard a different version. Each of them have distinct perspective on the narrative of the killer who escaped from an asylum. Ray grabs the key from Helen and drives the car out back to the village where Barry isn't feeling well enough to take the wheel. Barry switches to rock music while clutching a bottle of wine and screams out the car's top window. Barry loses control and drips the bottle on Ray, causing him to lose attention on the road. Barry yells so loudly because something or someone is about to be hit and Ray ends up hitting them. Julie shouts as she sees a man lying motionless on the side of the road. They approach the man and tell Ray to check the man's pulse. When Ray checks his pulse, he assumes the man is dead. Helen walks back to the car but Barry stops her. While Julie considers contacting an ambulance or the police, but Barry refuses since he's a donkey. Ray suggests to take some time to consider their options. Julie is crying like a baby and asks Ray what's there to think about when it's evident that it's an accident and that he is sober. But it's pointed out that Barry did drop a lot of liquor all over the car. They yell at each other about what to do with the dead body. Then they're considering simply throwing the body into the river. A bunch of bird brains. Uh, uh, but not Julie, who understood that even if they didn't report it to the authorities, they'd still conduct a search and follow up. They bring the body to the docks and are hoping that the crabs and fish will consume it. Goodness gracious. Uh, they're going to toss the body into the river, but Ray is terrified and worried that they wouldn't be able to do it. Helen volunteers but the dead guy wakes up and grabs her crown. Barry kicks the man who's carrying Helen's crown into the river. Helen sobs as Barry dives into the sea to retrieve the crown. The man opens its eyes just as he's ready to take it from the man's hands. Barry panics and swims back to the docks. They then make a deal not to bring up the incident again. Julie returns home one year later, after a year on campus. She considers not going since she's terrified and recalls what occurred last summer, but her companion insists on driving her home. Upon her arrival, her mother meets her. She doesn't seem joyful when she arrives and has breakfast with her mother. She doesn't have any reactions when asked about the snapper her mother cooked for her, leading her mother to believe she's on drugs. Sounds like my mom. Oh, Julie on the other hand claims that there are no drugs. A letter addressed to her arrives. When she opens it, it tells her that it knows what they did last summer, which makes her afraid. And I, I can't even remember what I ate last night. Oh, that's, uh, that's right, a whole box of goldfish crackers. Hmm. Uh, she screams in disbelief and asks her mother where the letter came from because it has no return address or postmark. Her mother, on the other hand, is intrigued and inquires about it. Julie dashes upstairs and spends the night staring at it. Julie drives to a boutique where Elsa works as a manager the next morning. She inquires for Helen's New York phone number. Helen is working and assisting her sister Elsa. Much to her astonishment, Julie is greeted by her. Julie then inquires about New York. It didn't work out, according to Helen. She shows her the letter she received the day before. Helen is taken aback by the letter's content. Julie believes that someone is aware of what they did. They proceed to Barry's, who had allegedly ended his relationship with Helen. When Barry notices them approaching, he inquires as to what they're doing on his property. He couldn't believe the letter had anything to do with the incident. He yells at Julie not to say anything out loud because his mother might hear. 
pretty boy still living with mom? Julie informs them that the man they pushed into the water was David Egan, who was discovered three weeks later in a shrimp net near Miller's dock. She tells him it was all in the media. And while the police say it was an accident drowning, Julie believes they are to blame for David's death. She also admits that she's broken up with Ray, and all she knows is that he's working up north. She hasn't informed him about the letter. At the docks, Max is finishing his duties at the fish storage facility when someone appears from behind the smoke. He attempts to see who's there, but without saying anything, a man in a cloak with a hook he left on the ice block strikes him, killing him instantly. Barry is working outside the docks on the same night. He then hears the revving of his car. He dashes outside but his car has already been stolen. He tries to run for it but it pursues him, so he flees quickly. Despite this, he is badly injured and is dragged to the dock's edges. He is severely injured, bleeding and unable to stand. The cloaked figure exits the vehicle and approaches him, holding the hook. Barry cries out loud, apologizing and explaining they didn't mean everything. The next day, they visit the Egans in Maribel County. They encounter Missy Egan, who lives alone because her mother is unable to cope with what happened to her younger brother David, and their father had passed away. Helen inquires about David's friend, about whom Missy knew little. But she tells them his name is Billy Blue, and that he paid his condolences to his friend at the funeral. Julie drives Helen home that night after visiting the Egan sister. When she wakes up the next morning, she is terrified because her beautiful hair had been cut into pieces and when she looks into the mirror, the word soon is written on it, causing her to scream so loudly that she immediately calls Julie. Julie rushes to her location and while driving, she hears a sound in her trunk. So she pulls over to open it and sees Max wearing Barry's jacket, which is covered in crabs. She almost gets hit by another car. So she closes the hood and sprints to Helen's house where she also finds Barry. They return to the car to check on Max, but the body as well as the crabs had vanished. Everything had been cleaned up. Julie is enraged because she knows this man is watching and waiting for them. They're looking for Ray because Barry believes he's the one who's doing all of this. When they meet up with Ray, Barry smacks him in the face fiercely. Julie intervenes to prevent them from fighting. Ray is shocked to find out that Max is dead. He also informs them that he has received a letter. Julie arrives at the Egan's house. Julie inquires if she recalls her from the previous day. Missy, in turn, inquires about her business. Meanwhile, Helen spots the man at the parade and alerts Barry, who promptly chases him away, but it turned out he wasn't the man they were looking for. Helen, who is unhappy at the moment, glances about and notices that practically everyone she sees is dressed in the same cloak as the killer until one man stands out from the rest by displaying the hook he uses to kill. Julie discovers at the Egan's house that the hit and run victim was not David after all. She returns to town quickly to inform the rest. Helen can't stop worrying while the community is getting ready for the next Croker's Queen procession because she saw the killer. Barry on the other hand comforts her. He sits where they sat last year before the incident when Helen was crowned queen. Helen, from below, smiles as she looks at him. Suddenly, a shadow appears behind Barry, which he is unaware of, and takes Barry by the hook. Helen recognizes the killer while inside the police car and calls out to the officer to warn him. He turns when he hears her voice, but he can't understand her. So as he turns back to face the man, he smacks him with his hook, instantly killing him. Julie is searching for the real killer at home and discovers that it is Susie Willis' father, Benjamin Willis. Helen is fleeing for her life as the assailant closes in on her. She arrives to their store and orders Elsa to shut the other door while she phones the cops. But it is too late since the man has already entered. And as Elsa shuts the other door, the man promptly kills her and pulls her to the bathroom. Helen is apprehended near where the folks are holding the parade on the main road while fleeing. She fights back, but she is helpless, and she is killed on the side of the road without anyone noticing. Julie continues looking for Helen and the others, but can't find them. She remembers Ray when she spotted the boats on the docks. Ray hears her, 
As she sprints towards his boat and cries out his name, she informs him that it is Susie's father, not David, who kills, and that they must locate the others. Ray calmly invites her to accompany him in his boat, but Julie notes the boat name is Billy Blue, and Julie flees, believing Ray is the killer the whole time. Ray pursues her but is struck by a man who orders Julie to enter the boat as Ray is knocked out. The man enters the boat and entangles the duck rope. Julie realizes it's Benjamin's boat after noticing every photo of them on the board wall inside. She tries to flee, but it's too late because the boat is already a long way from the docks. Ray stands up and uses a small watercraft to chase them. While Julie is down in the boat's storage area, Ray gets on board and is greeted by Benjamin with his hook. Ray is fighting Ben when he is hit and thrown overboard. Fortunately, he manages to cling to the boat's fishnet. Ben chases Julie through the storage room, trying to open every door she can. Ray is able to board again, and Julie unlocks the door to the storage room, which is still partially filled with ice cubes, and discovers that all of the bodies that were murdered were held there. Ray sees her screaming, but Benjamin is approaching, so he climbs to the top of the boat. When Benjamin opens the door to Julie, Ray drops the pulley and hits Benjamin in the face, knocking him out. Ray aids Julie in her ascent to the top, but Benjamin awakens and grabs her by the neck. Ray hooks his hand with a rope as Ben is about to hit her with his hook. Then Ray turns on the motor, which drags Ben up and slashes his hand holding the hook before tossing him out to sea. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.